think we roll, throw your hands up. People outside up in your eyes, turn this damn up. My size are legendary. The hottest shit this century is live wire. That's one of the dopest ones out. Yeah, you like Method Man, the ice cream. That's Ray Vaughn, Method yeah, Man, Ray and Ghostface. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Ice cream, ice cream. We all love ice cream. Uh -huh. Yeah. I like cream. Ice cream. Well, what's yeah. your favorite ice cream? Um, butter pecan. Like butter pecan. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> what's your favorite ice cream? Uh -huh. Write it right there in the text right below. Let yeah. us know. Like, share, subscribe, and follow. Uh -huh. Yeah. Add us. Butter pecan chocolate. We streaming on all digital platforms. Yeah. Yeah. Pandora, <laughs> Spotify, Tiki Live. Yeah. It's going down. It's going down. It's full Wednesday. Full Wednesday. Boom, boom, boom. We got Winter Parks up in the building. ODB, son. Plus, we got Supreme celebrating the 25th anniversary of Sons of Man. Yep. So while we wait, let's talk about our next uh, Black History. Black History yeah. trivia. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, uh, I don't know. I'll pick one today. Uh, Who comes to mind? Well, yeah. uh, Tony Morrison. Great. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Great. an author, black author. Well, enlighten some of the people out there with some of the... Tony. Tony Morrison. Uh -huh, yeah, Tony Morrison. What's some of the books that uh -huh. Tony Morrison has Well, she's a, she's a great author. She is an esteemed author, activist that we should know about. Talking about books, uh -huh. have you ever read Terry McMillan? Uh-huh. I've heard of her. I've never read it. Don't get to a Terry McMillan book. My favorite is Black Coffee with No Cream. Yeah. Okay. That's my favorite book. Uh -huh. I read it a few times. Okay. And it was very intriguing. Let's look it up. Because okay. I don't know about Toni Morrison at all. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that don't know about Toni Morrison either. Toni Morrison is in, in the National Women's History Museum. Mm. She was born February 16th, 1993. So she just had a birthday and was from in, uh, born in Ohio. She's the second of four children. Wow. Yes, her birth name was Chloe. I, I like that. I like Chloe. Chloe. Mm -hmm. Also, she grew up in a semi-integrated area. Racial discrimination was a constant threat. Atmosphere was was hitting. Who doesn't go through that? You know what I mean? Yeah. We've all been through that. Three of her books: The Song of Solomon. Mm. Oh, I have read one book. We love it. Remember Which is a movie? great book. And they made, they a, made movie a movie out of, out of it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Motion picture. Uh -huh. Motion picture. Uh -huh. We yeah. love it. We love it. And The Bluest Eye. Uh huh. And A Mercy. Oh, cool. Tony Morrison, rest in peace, passed in 2019. Yes. She was a Nobel and Pulitzer Prize winning American. Novelist. Ooh, yeah. So educate yourself. Let's not forget the author, Tony Morrison. He's out there in the Bronx. Wow. Yeah. All right, you got some history right there for the people. Uh -huh. Black history. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. New York bestseller, Pulitzer Prize, and Nobel Prize winner. Tony Morrison. So uh, go cop one of her books. And support the Tony Morrison. Yeah, Tony Morrison. Reading is fundamental. Reading is fundamental. Yes, reading is fundamental. yes. go get all the books. Go cop all of them. Yeah, please do yeah. while we're in this pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Now is the perfect idea. time to be reading any of way. Uh-huh, yep. And yeah. you said who? Terry McMillan. Oh, Terry yeah. McMillan. I've heard of her Good before. book. Good book. Black Coffee, No Cream. Black Coffee, No Cream. Amazon. Yes. Uh huh. She's an American. She's been Amazon bestseller a few times. No, the number one New York Times bestselling offer of waiting to exhale. How did I not know that? Hey, how Stella. That's got her a female's perfect uh, movie. Oh uh, yeah, and how Stella got her groove back. Yes, that's a popular one. Another star studded. Uh huh. And the interruption of everything. Yeah. 
Big uh, shout out to Latoya Jackson. Yeah. Just tapped on in. Ooh, and, what's happening? Yeah. Big shout out to all the Wu Tang fans out there. It's Wu Wednesday. It's Wu Wednesday, Wednesday in the building. Supreme. Yeah. That's right. Plus, we got Winter Parks. Winter Parks will be up in the building. ODB's son. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That's it's true. real big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right now, we're live on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Rain Jackson Live and DJ Live Wires. And we're live on YouTube, the Climax Corporation. And IG, so serious TV. So. And don't forget Roku Cable. Yeah. Yeah, Roku on, Cable. Stream on Roku. Amazon Music, uh -huh. Apple Music, Deezer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Pandora. Pandora, Spotify. Uh -huh. Spotify. Spotify pay big bucks. <laughs> Spotify. Yeah. This show been brought to you by the Climax Corporation, uh -huh. Universal Music Group, mm -hmm. the Hilton Hotel, and Mercedes Benz. Go buy your Benz. Go buy a Benz. Yeah, go buy a Benz. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big, big. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's Wool Wednesday. Uh huh. What's your favorite Benz? What's my favorite Benz? I like the hashbacks. Okay. Yeah, I like the hashbacks. Okay. So 350 or the SX? I'll say 350, preferably color Chevy Red. I like AMGs. I like the face. Okay, okay, yeah, that, that's a good model. Yeah, that's like a good AMGs model. And yeah. uh, I like the 450, the super trucks. Yeah, those are hot. Those are hot. Um, they have a new version out right now. They just released one that um, drives by itself. For real? Yeah, and then it has like it's a touch panel, um, like the key, like. So what do you mean you drive by yourself? Like you just put it in your location and GPS, and it's gonna take you there without you holding the wheel? Oh snap! Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. so can you still get charged for drinking and driving if you drink and then jump in the Probably car? Probably the police will find some way to figure that out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, good question. Good they question. That part out. All right. All right. Now, yeah, I can't. I will. I think most people who uh, can afford that car won't drink and drive because Basically, you don't want to yeah, risk. you don't want to risk it. Probably an arm and a leg and a shoulder too. That's what I'm saying. So, um, shout out to Mercedes. Yeah, big Mercedes. shout out to Mercedes. Mercedes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah. So, who we got to then? Who's that? Earn cash quick. Earn, oh. Yeah, that's somebody trying to scam you. Uh-huh. No, thank you. <laughs> that's somebody trying to take your money. Give us 50, and we're going to flip that to 5,000. Yeah. yeah. Hit that kite down there and let everybody know that uh, we're live right now, and they can come on and chat with us, ask us any kind of questions. Like, you know? share, follow. Yeah, DJ Livewire got a long history, and, you know. And so on. do you. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to brag. I don't like to boast. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Woo Wednesday. Woo. Woo Wednesday. Yeah, we got Winter Parks up in the building. ODB, son. Plus, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Sons of Man. Uh -huh. And we got the super producer up in the building. So Supreme, that is. He's up in the building. Uh -huh. That's right. Yep, we're Let's trying to go down. for that four-hour marathon. I think we're going to do that four-hour marathon soon for Facebook. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I don't know what we're doing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> going to cut a check. Somebody <laughs> going to cut the check. Cut that check. Yeah. <laughs> we try to get to four hours, y'all. More dinero. Mm -hmm. More yeah. chicken. Mm -hmm. More chicken. More chicken. So follow us on Facebook, uh, Rain Jackson Live. DJ Live Wire. Woo Wednesday. Yeah, so we trying to hit those. It's those, going uh, down. So we waiting for Facebook Supreme Mondays. to tap on in. Definitely. And we're going to be chopping up with him. That should be real big. Yeah. I know the guard always got some stuff to build. Yeah, uh, what time is this? Put it is now place. Equality Knowledge Power. So it is now 615. West Coast is understanding knowledge power, which is 315. Yeah, that's the hour right there. Yeah, it's Supreme it's Mathematics. Mm-hmm. Yep. Go check out our last interview that we did with, uh, who did we get? We did uh, Callie Ranks. That Callie was Ranks, Def yeah. Jam recording uh -huh. artist. Killed them all. 
represent, represent. Killed them all. Represent, represent. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. That was a hot interview. Right, us, right, us. Exactly. Shout out to Cali Ranks for the support. Uh, then before that, we had uh, Slate Stone. The Slate Black Stone, Chamber. the Black Chamber. Nam Radio. Yeah, he dropped like six exclusives. Uh huh. Yeah, he did. He did. That's what's up. So uh, check that out on Live Wires Radio Show. We streaming, we playing, we spinning 25 8. 25 days. Uh huh. And we also on Valentine's Day had Ruben Cannon. Yeah, big shout out to Ruben Cannon. Mm-hmm. Nick Cannon, brother. Season Nick two kickoff. One of the brothers of Nick Cannon, yes, and he is the R and B superstar. Yeah, we got a whole lot of major celebrities for the people. Uh huh. That season two been fire. Yeah, but thanks for tuning in, you guys. Thanks for supporting us. We really appreciate it um, during this COVID time when we everybody bored in the house and in the house bored. Nothing to do. <laughs> thanks. It's for Friday, you. Craig. It's Friday. I know, right? Is it? No, no, it's, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> it's Wool Wednesday. It's Wool Wednesday. Yeah. yeah really but the slogan was good. The slogan was yeah, good. Yeah, it kind of worked. <laughs> I was like, wait, Friday. <laughs> we're going to be doing something else. <laughs> Big shout out to the whole Woo Worldwide DJ Coalition. Yes. Also, Protect Your Neck Records mm-hmm. and uh, Wu Tang Management. Yeah. It's going down. Shout out to Jimmy Kane. Happy yeah. Birthday, happy Jimmy birthday, Kane. Jimmy. Happy Party birthday. Party like a rock star. Happy yeah. birthday to you. Uh-huh. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy Bum, K. Yes, Jimmy K. Y'all go to his page and give him a special. Yeah, shout him birthday. out. Shout him out. Shout out. I think it was yesterday. But it was yesterday, but it's always, you know, always good. Yeah, it was never late. Oh, yeah, better better late than never. Yeah. All right, always on time. Always on time. I told you how the guards built. Always yeah. on time. Always on time. Yeah. Boom, 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 hey. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it's the 25th anniversary of Sons of Men. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all hear me? Oh, there we Y'all go. Thank you, thank you. All right, how boom, are you? Boom, 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 boom. Thanks for the shout outs. Yo, yo, y'all know what it is, right? It's Supreme Sons of Man Wu Tang. Boom, 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 boom. Brooklyn is in the house. The Red is Hook. The fees are swarming. All right. It is what it is. Silver Medusa. Supreme is in the building. Thank you. No respect, GOD. Yo, same to you, man. I got to give you a shout out, man. I got to give y'all a shout out. You know, I'm on here with Live Wire, Live Wire's radio, radio yeah. show. Yeah. Shout out DJ Live Wire. Yeah. Boom, 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 Rain boom. Jackson. Yeah, that's so um, Yo, yo, for real, man. Thank you for um, you know, asking me to be on the show. You know, we always talking on on on, on um on Facebook. You know, you already know. God, God, God got build, got to build with, with the gods. Yeah, building private message. So. You know, so, you know, finally we get a chance to do something, right? Yes, indeedy. And it's something big. It's the Uh 25th anniversary of the Sons of Man. Boom, boom, boom. Yo, that's that's crazy because you're saying that, right? And um, I'm a Sons of Man. I'm one of the founding members. Day one. I'm a dead day one. Day one. And if it wasn't, if we was enlightening the people at the beginning of the show Mm -hmm. during the intro, that you are the producer that mm-hmm. actually helped them before their name was Sons of Man with mm-hmm. yep. their music and they track. There you go, yep, and that's the facts. That's facts. So yeah, um, I knew everybody, right? Of course, Hellraiser and Shabash, they from Red Hook. Yes, so indeed. We, from the, same, we from the same project. So yeah, that's where we was doing it. In my crib, we was doing it, you know, trying to get, trying to get on. You know, but uh, then we finally met Rizzo and him, and then here come Prodigal. Um, Rizzo was like, yo, check out my cousin. And that was 62nd. And of course, Priest was already there with Jizza. He was there. And he said, yo, why don't y'all guys form a group? I bet. And it was crazy, because one day, we was always in the studio from day one with Rizzo and him. Once we met them, like, we met them before they even dropped, dropped the album. It, before they dropped their first single, we was with them. 
and um in the studio at Jive Records. And um that's when he said, yo, you know, why don't you start a group or whatever like that? And I remember coming to Firehouse Studio. That's where they used to record. <laughs> and, and Sons of Man, well, they wasn't Sons of Man at the time, right? So we just standing outside. They they standing outside. So here I come walking down the street. I think it was 23rd Street. It's like down the block from Madison Square Garden, right? In the in the uh in the garment district, right? So I'm walking down, they outside. And I come out, yo, what's up? Why y'all ain't upstairs? And they got this grin, this smile on their face. I'm like, yo, what happened? What's going on? Yo, we got the name of the group. I'm like, what's the name? Sons of Man. I'm like, oh, all right. What it mean? You know, and you know how we are. You know, Killer Priest, you know, you know how we 5% Killer Priest is Israelite. He always was. He always had a Bible. He always had books. He always had, he had the Apocrypha. At that day, he had the apocrypha. So, yeah, they had they had the meaning for for sons of man because they had to it had to mean something to me when they said sons of man. I'm like, what do it mean? When they broke it down, I said, then let's go with it. Yeah, mm. oh, that's some history right there. Mm -hmm. That's deep history. Yeah. That's Wu Tang history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, fire. <laughs> yeah, he let no from the door. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? June, <laughs> June number one from the firehouse. Yep. Yeah. Right. So right when y'all changed your name, right, to Sons of Man, mm -hmm. did the mindset of how y'all created the music, how you set back and illustrated how it should actually go, did that impact it and change it? And if so, how? I think it changed immediately. Because once they took on the name Sons of Man, it meant something, right? Mm -hmm. We the Son of Man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, before that, right? So with Shabash, Hellraiser, and us, uh, well, Hellraiser, he had his own partner, right? So we were, remember, I, I don't know if y'all know, I, I, re, I released a record on Nocturnal Seven Records. Oh, no, right? please tell the people, please tell the people, yeah. enlighten us. So, so me and my partner Ace, we released, we started a record label. We all from Red Hook. We started a record label called Nocturnal Seven Records. So it was Hellraiser and his partner, um, Seventh Ambassador, right? So Seventh Ambassadors from Red Hook too. So they had their own group. They was the last future. Okay. So when we came to RZA, we were already Hellraiser. Was, Hellraiser and, and, and Seventh was a group. They was the last future on my record label, right? And me and Shabash was our own group. You know what I'm saying? Why, so, what was the name of your group? Uh, it was just Bash and Supreme. It was okay. Bash and Supreme. But our whole crew, which is more people that's involved, we were the Mad Mob. Mm. That was our name. But mm. in my lab, we always was building 5% lessons, Bible, just history, you know. Then when we got with Wu, RZA, 5%, his brothers, 5%, right? Old ODB, 5%, so it was 5%. Then here we, we kill a priest, he's dead. Yo, I'm like, yo, peace. You know, ask him his name or whatever, you know. Um, he says, kill a priest. I'm like, kill a priest, what that means? Then he, I'm like, what's this book you got in your hand? So basically, when we was in the studio, we were always building, always, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. You can walk in the studio, somebody might just say, what's today's degree? It might be Jizza. He just say, what's today's degree? Rizza would always build. You could walk in. It wasn't a, a cipher with people rhyming. It was a cipher with people building. And we actually kind of build and drop knowledge before we actually made music, mm -hmm. you know, and um, mm. you know, you just walk in. If I walk in the studio right now, just say back then, or if I was to see RZA right now, I would expect him to say, "Please, Preem, how you been? How you see about today's degree?" And he might not say today's degree. He might just say something about the news, current, current. You know, he might talk about Biden. And yeah. the next minute we building on what is Biden's purpose. Right, 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 right. What is the purpose of what's going on? What's the science of what is actually happening right now? 
and that will turn into a big discussion and it will go through five ascent lessons and go through religions um the bible the quran everybody that's there is going to drop knowledge on that subject wow wow well mm -hmm. that's what the gods do the gods build the yep. gods build by any means necessary. It's so much of a blessing, man, for you to even be on this show right now. You know, with the mm -hmm. stuff that y'all mustered up, it's no expiration mark. You can't put an expiration date on good music. That right. stuff is iconic. You know, right. people still blasting it now in their cars. I hear that, yeah. For meditation, yeah, people sitting back <laughs> listening to the sons of man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? This is what you call, this is my history right here. You know what I'm saying? The fifth element. Earth, wind, fire, suns, and man. You know what I'm saying? You got the Wu-Tang in the house. You know what I'm saying? ODB. Your wide clap, play the guitar, man. Earth is approximately covered under water, possibly three-fourths of the surface. The sun and moon had to track the power while it's on its way around the sun. Tattoos. I believe, and it says through Google, I could be wrong, but as I did my Google search, it says that that W is the most tatted hip hop tattoo. I believe Go. it. I believe it. You, you see it everywhere. It's all over the place. All kind of designs, all kind of, it's on everything, on t-shirts, sneakers, on people. Shit, man. Look, I'm from Wu-Tang, right? I'm part of Wu-Tang. I got one on my fucking wall, son. Boom, 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 boom. It's one on my wall, you know? So it's Velcro, but it's on my wall. So if you walk in my studio, you know you're what it is. You're going to see it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know? Okay, it's, so it's, my, question, my question is, um, it's Black History Month, and I've been asking who is the Black, the influential african-american um from the past that we should be telling our children about now mm. wow well i have kids barack is there right he's there from that's the, the past. most he's still living from the he's, past okay from the past well my thing and i told is my thing is malcolm x man In fact, I think we'd be fooling ourselves if we had an audience this large and didn't realize that there were some enemies present. Okay. Mine is Malcolm X. Elaborate. Oh, uh, for me personally, that's how I got knowledge yourself. Mm. Because when I was when I was a kid coming up, I knew something was different about myself. Right? Just being in school with different races of kids. And I'm like looking like, yo, those those kids right there can't run as fast as, as us. Mm -hmm. Every time they fall out, they get hurt. And I would ask my mom, like, yo, why are we stronger than them? My mom, and I would ask her a lot of questions about the Bible. My mother is a Christian, was a Christian. We realize that Adam Clayton Powell is a Christian minister. He's the, he has the Abyssinia Baptist Church, but at the same time, he's more famous for his political struggling. And Dr. King is a Christian minister in Atlanta, from Atlanta, Georgia, or in Atlanta, Georgia, but he's become more famous for being involved in the civil rights struggle. There's another in New York, Reverend Galamison. I don't know if you've heard of him out here. He's a Christian minister from Brooklyn, but has become famous for his fight against the segregated school system in Brooklyn. Reverend Cleve, right here, is a Christian minister here in Detroit. He's the head of the Freedom Now Party. All of these are Christian ministers. All of these are Christian ministers, but they don't come to us as Christian ministers. They come to us as fighters in some other category. I'm a Muslim minister. The same as they are Christian ministers, I'm a Muslim minister. And I don't believe in fighting today in any one front, but on all fronts. And my father, he was a pastor. Okay. And I would, he didn't live with us, but I would ask some questions they could not answer. Mm. They just couldn't answer my questions. They, they were 
quote Bible scriptures we would read. I was a Jehovah Witness, and they nobody could answer my questions. So one day, my mom was at work. She came home. She gave me the autobiography of Malcolm X. She said, son, I hope this can help you and answer the questions because I can't answer them. That's, that's deep. Now that's deep. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. That's how you pass on information. Uh -huh. and, so, and, and so I read, I read it. Then, um, then you know what? It ain't only Malcolm X. It's just brothers from my hood mm -hmm. that were 5%. Yeah. You know, so then let's go to that. So now I got, you know, I'm reading the book, right? Autobiography. But then it's 5% at the time, you know? Yeah. And I remember my brother, he's a young, one age younger than me. His name is Asiatic, mm -hmm. right? He got knowledge before me. He got five percent. Mm -hmm. He came in the house with supreme mathematics. We were young. We probably was 12, 13 years old. Could not read, right? Because we didn't go to school. We didn't go to school. We play hooky, truant officers, knocking on our door, whatever, all right? Got that. But my mom was like, well, we... We going down the wrong road. She could ha have a hard time controlling us. But when he came in with those lessons, she's like, wow, that's something that my brother was interested in. Mm. Yo, my mom, a Christian, right? Believe yeah. Jesus is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. She sat down, sat me and my brother down and read the read Supreme Mathematics to us. Wow. Yes. And she read it over and over and quizzed us on it until we learned Supreme Mathematics. Mm -hmm. My mother did that. By her doing that, we learned how to read. Mm -hmm. That's you cool. know, so yeah. I have to give it also to just brothers in my community. That's what's up. You know, awesome. and they, a lot of them ain't here. And they gave me knowledge yourself. Yeah. You know? That's that. That's, that's what should be passing on to our children. Um, takes a village. It takes a village. Here you go. Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm from Red Hook Projects. So it's tough know over there, man. It's always yeah. been tough over there. Yeah, and it is, you know, but in that time when I was coming up, be, this is before crack, uh, the community was a true community, man, with real true love. It was mm -hmm. different than what it is now. Crack kind of destroyed that. Now, not saying dope was there and whatever weed was there, but it wasn't like an epidemic kind of level. Mm. If people was doing dope, it was older dudes, and you didn't even know they was doing it, mm. you know? So, and and still, if they were doing it, they were looking out for us, you know? Right, right. You, you know, so, and, and I can say that for all different um, communities, because I would travel from Red Hook to Bed-Stuy to, to Fort Greene to Gowanus by myself. Yeah. Long as I was black people around, I was okay. Yeah. That's you right. Know, somebody that's was gonna right. guide that's you where you had to go if you was lost. Where's this? Somebody is gonna guide you where you gotta go and and help you out and and look after you because you was black. Mm -hmm. So it was a different era back then. You know, mm -hmm. we was more of a community. We was a village. So Rel was a village. Gowana's projects a village. That was our next projects over. That's how I, that's how I see it. You know. So okay. I still carry that with me as a man now. Okay. You know, even though maybe the world has changed their view and they don't want to have a village, but whoever comes in contact with me, I'm going to give you the village. Yeah, that's what's up. That's too. <laughs> so your environment played a major role in the music that you produce and that you make. Uh huh. Yes. Of course. So that was the thing. So Shabash, Shabash, and when, when Shabash, we would make music, uh, Bash basically told Red Hook stories. And he still do it now. What? Yeah, those are stories. There's stories of real things that happened in Red Hook. We would see it during the drug is and crack era. We'd be in the house and they'd be shooting and whatever, whatever. Right? I was so in party with a tech came from looking out the window, hearing the gunshots, and then I'm looking, I'm like, yo, that dude got a Tech 9 in his hand. And right then and there, I had a beat playing that we made a song called Party With A Tech. That's a banger. I played that earlier when you sent it to me on the email. Mm -hmm. I've been spending it ever since, getting a whole lot of requests for it, to my day and hearing it in a very long time. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. the inspiration of that song. That's the inspiration of that wow. song. Yeah. Wow. 
You mm-hmm. get some first class knowledge up in here. Yeah, then um, Hellraiser and, and Seventh Ambassador, they a little younger than Shabazz, right? So they, I didn't give, I didn't send you the link to their, their song. Their song was Living in Hell. So they were seeing it from in the projects as we young, these young kids, and they were living in hell. Because living through the drug era. So they songs represent what they were seeing and how they felt in their community. It felt like they were living in hell. So a lot of life experience actually into the music. A lot of artists don't do that no more. Yeah. They just, a lot right. of artists don't do that no more. That's, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right. Authentic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Authentic right there. Yeah. 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 Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So that, like I said, the song was the, uh, the song was living in hell, but they group name, right, was the last future. They thought they were the last generation, the last future of our community, because they thought, you know, you got to look at these little dudes wow. thought that they thought that yo all this shooting the, the people that were shooting was my age and stuff, but the next generation didn't give a they didn't care. Yeah. You know, they didn't follow the rules of my generation. Mm-hmm. So it was like the younger generation wasn't going to survive. They was going to kill each other off. So he felt it was the last future. They was the last future, you know? Wow, that's deep. Yeah. That's, deep. that's so some history. Yeah, so you said uh, Barack Obama for the president. So why, what should we be teaching our children about him? Oh, man, I, I have mixed feelings about Barack Mm-hmm. I'm happy that he became president. I'm happy that a black person became president, right? Uh, I was very happy. My mom is gone now, right? She passed, but she was here to see Barack become president. That's a blessing. Mm-hmm. That's and a that, blessing. And seeing her face and seeing how happy she was because she grew up in the South and she was a child with her mother her grandmother and her uncles in a cotton field. Oh, okay. Yeah. My mom. So yeah. my mom said she wasn't having it when she got out of high school and came to New York. Mm-hmm. So my mom seen racism at his at his at his truest, most evil mm-hmm. form. Yeah. yeah. But in her lifetime, a dream came true. It was a Barack. And Michelle Obama, she had their pictures, whatever. But for me personally, it's more, there's a lot of politics to it, whatever. Me and my son, we talk about it all the time. So I I, I have my my feeling about it, which I ain't going to go too deep into it. <laughs> we talk about it all the time. Yeah, we be building it. We be building it on the politics uh-huh. every there. Yeah. Um, it's always good to give out some information for the individuals who don't know. You know the sleepers? Yeah, yeah. gotta wake yeah. some of them up. Yeah, so for, for for the older generation, I'm happy that they got to see it. Mm-hmm. For my generation, okay, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm like, yeah, black dude got in the White House. Y'all thought it was never gonna happen? Smack in your face. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But I always said when he gets out, we're gonna have hell to pay. Yes. Because they're gonna be pissed off that a black man got in there. And that proved itself when we got Trump, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. So, so it's, it's, it's an up and down. Barack only was able to do what he was able to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's still, it's just one black man fighting against a whole a country, a Senate, a, you know, whatever you want to say. Yeah. That's, come on, yeah. you know what but, I'm saying. Well, here goes the, the question. Continues. I yeah, got a it, question. Yeah. Okay. Here goes the question. Do you think with Biden being in there, you think it's going to be a big change from when Trump was in there? I, w- I hope it. I hope it do. I hope. Okay. To give you my real politic, my how yes, I think sir. about politics. Give it to us, Raw. Oh, baby, I like it, Raw. <laughs> yo, yo, listen. I didn't even vote, man. The, I, the, yo, the first time I ever voted, I was a kid. I voted for Jesse Jackson. Mm-hmm. 
because all the whole community said go vote for Jesse Jackson and I voted. After that, I never voted until Barack and my yeah. mother and them was so in the in, in in front of the TV praying and crying. Yo, they were praying. The church was praying. Wow. Trust me. So I was like, you know what? I have to roll with them because this is their wish. This is my mother's wish and my people's wish. I'm gonna roll. I'll go vote. So I voted again for Barack. Mm -hmm. But after that, I ain't vote for Biden. I was like, it's gonna be whatever it's gonna be. And you know, mm. um, I, I'm a I'm a true five percent man. I truly believe in that we should be doing for self. I truly Facts. believe that, and Facts. I I really wish we as a nation would just get together and say, "Yo, look, we don't need them no more. Let's build our own thing and let's step off, man. Let's get a divorce and let's do our own thing." Yeah. So that's where that's where I'm at. But it I don't know when it's going to happen, but. That's where I'm at. So I'm not really into supporting, supporting Massa. I'm, uh, it is what it is. You got it, all right, but I'm not rolling with you. I don't care what side it is, who's playing for you. I'm not really with it. You know, I hope for the best, you know? Yeah. What do you think is one of our, our steps as, as melanated people towards, because I mean, we can say the goal we want to see moving forward, but how do we make steps? Because, you know, faith without works is dead. So how do we make steps towards, you know, separating ourselves from the colonizers and from white supremacy? And, you know, how do we, what's the first step in doing that? That's, yeah, man. That's, no this, this is something Good that question. We, Good question. This is something that we, when I was taught about Wu-Tang and Sons of Man, and I mean, I always say Wu-Tang Sons of Man, but Grave Diggers was in the studio, right? Royal Family was in the um, studio, Coins. Uh, it was a, a lot of people in the studio and everybody had their opinions. And, and I truly believe that was our goal back then mm -hmm. is to bring knowledge to the people through our music because that was a tool for us. We was using the music to hopefully yeah. bring knowledge to people and bring us together so we can love each other. I think we have to just learn how to love each other first. Mm -hmm. right? Callie but Rain said love that, that, that the yes, hip hop was our ghetto newspaper. Right. Uh -huh. So, right. So I just personally, I think that first you got to love yourself. If we can love ourselves, then you can love someone else. Okay. Then we could be a village again. <laughs> and then we could look out for each other again yeah. and communicate with each other again. I look at it and say, wow, man, you know, so many people got knowledge. I got Israelite friends. I got Christian friends, right? Uh, communities of uh, uh, 5%, Islam, whatever, right? Yeah. And it's powerful brothers, brothers who got vast knowledge of all kind of whatever you want to, whatever subject, mm -hmm. right? We talking book knowledge, we talking knowledge on how to build, how to work on a car, how to build a building, how to whatever. My thing is, sometimes I think just because we in different organizations, it almost feels like, yo, I'm not going to help you because you're not in my organization. Oh, you want help? Join my organization. Yeah. I'm like, yo, why I have to join your organization? Why we just can't come together and work? Yeah. You know, that's because a good question. That's the crap. If you look, right, if you look at Congress, right, mm -hmm. you just look at this politics or whatever. Mm -hmm. Look at Congress; they all sitting in there, the House, the Senate, or whatever. They also, you think all of them believe the same thing? No, they don't. They don't believe the same thing. They all believe different. That they all from different states, right. right? They there to represent their state and their state's wants. Yep. They all want different things. Each state don't want the exact same thing, but they do got some common things they want, but they say, yo, man, we're going to get together and we're going to work together mm -hmm. to make it happen. Of course, they got to vote and do all that stuff, but you understand what I'm saying, the concept. Yeah. And you got to get vote, together you and, have and, and, and work. Yeah, you're right. And for us, it's like, you know, pepper and rice. You know what I mean? The, the, our our opinion is, is greater if we were to get together and, and form that opinion as people. But yeah. to bring that to Congress, they like, yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> it's only two of y'all. <laughs> Come back when you get more. Yeah. <laughs> but my thing is, we ain't, we don't need we don't need Congress. We don't need none of that. All yeah. we got to do is just get together and do it ourselves in our own communities. 
Okay. Yeah. That structure has yeah. been done, though. Uh -huh. yeah. That structure has been done. If you go to Crown Heights, if you go in the back of Marcy Projects mm -hmm. in Brooklyn, New York, you can see this same structure you're talking about. Mm -hmm. They got their own police. Regular police don't even come when they call. They call their own kind and they govern their own people. They the Jew, they got it's the Jewish Defense League. They got it. They got their own cars. They on Eastern Parkway. They got their own ambulance. They got their own police. They got their own, own everything. Oh, right. So but that, why we can't do it as people? Why so, we can't do it? We keep putting off until tomorrow. Procrastination. See, but that's why I said it's because I ain't saying because I'm saying in my opinion, we have different trains of thought or religion. Yeah. And I think that is what's holding, even down to the point, yo, you from Brownsville, I'm from Red Hook, you from Marcy, I ain't rolling with you. What, 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 what is that? Yeah, foolishness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that? Because you from another hood, we can't work together, you know? So it go, it's a lot, man. It, it could go even go down to clothes. This nigga don't dress like me. You know, it's like yeah, we- You we, see we, that every day, even with the kids in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we dealing with something that, to me, it just don't make sense, man. I would say, but I can't even say that. You see the color of our skin? Simply because we the same color, let's get together. Right. Because, but you know why that don't won't work? Because of my complexion, I'm a little lighter than the next dude. So the dark skin dude ain't gonna work with me. I ain't working with that light skin nigga. That's the Willie Lynch syndrome. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, that's true. We we have that stigma with Americans and Africans just alone, just by itself. By itself, just Americans and Africans that have a hard time even coming together. Yeah. And, you know what yes. I mean? It has to get better. Yeah, it does. It has to oh. get better. And it has to start today. Not tomorrow, not next month, not next week. It has to start today. Mm -hmm. Well, I do that. I talk, that's just the way I am and I talk, but uh, I even talk to brothers 5%, right? And a lot of brothers get mad at me for the things I say and how, my stance. I'm like, yo, we got knowledge yourself. I've been in the nation since I was 14, 15, whatever, over 25, like 30 something years, right? I'm like, yo, please don't come to me and say, peace God, how's, how you see about today's degree? And we're gonna talk in circles. I know that already, man. I didn't did that when I was a kid, right? Right. We building, when you say you building with me, Where's your hammer, your saw, your nails, your wood, your construction material? Where is it? Uh, all you got to do is show it to me because I know how to use all of them tools. Mm -hmm. Where are we building? Let's 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 build. I don't want to talk. Let's start laying some brick and, and build something. Mm -hmm. And I'll do that for free. Yeah. You don't got to pay me. I'll donate, donate my time for that. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of building I want to do. Yeah. You know, but then you'll get some brother, yo, God, then go do it. Yeah. I'm going to do it by myself? Yeah. If I yeah. have to. <laughs> I have to. Well, I have done it. I do it all the time for myself. I do it for my family, for my house. But I'm talking about for us as a nation. As, as yeah, a nation. It, it's going to take more than just one uh -huh. individual to do what you're trying to do. And I yeah. say all the time that we have to lead by example. You know, right. it starts like they like the old folks say. It starts in the home. It starts with right. the home training. You know what I mean? So maybe it this is. generation will give more knowledge to the next generation, so that they can, you know, have a different mindset and a mi different mind frame. Well, especially after COVID, like now we they did a whole year of non brainwashing. If you you know what I mean? If you treat right. that You're time right. right for your children, your next generation, if you utilize that time to accurately teach them instead of letting them sit in front of the TV all day or the, watching you know the I mean? dumb box. and actually teach them, then <laughs> when they come, when we come out on the other side of this, they'll have a whole different mind frame going back into the schools. You know what I mean? You so absolutely right. it's the same, it's the same. You no, you <laughs> absolutely right with that because that's what I've been doing. My <laughs> son is in here, he's 30, he's 30 years old. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to re-educate ourselves, learn more stuff. You know, even though we're doing it online, um, I know y'all seeing my YouTube channels and whatever. I'm it's always funny. trying to teach. I'm always trying to share. I don't ask people for money. It's like, oh, you know, if you don't know how to do it, this is how you do it. This is where you go. 
You know, if I don't know how to do it, there got to be somebody who know how to do it. That's and, true. And help somebody out to get to to get to the next level. Yeah. You know, and, and learn something. But yeah, right. mm-hmm. I remember, this is, I remember um, the um, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was saying that, you know, when it came to the women, you know, and the children, that we always send in our children to school to the babysitters to whatever and you know we refuse to homeschool them just so we can mm. get a dollar but it's more important to homeschool them and to teach them our ways and our practices and you know feed them right feed them to eat to live you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and, and, right. and nurture our seed correctly so that you know those things that that happen out you know with, with colonizers and with white supremacy mm-hmm. and systematic racism those things they will be protected against and can fight against and warn against because they will be stronger with the knowledge of self so it's you, you know, know what i mean it begins at home with with the woman at first and of then course it is. you know what i mean it then goes out to the men oh, that was that's strong that was deep that's, that's, oh. that's, that's that is she got them braids up in there dropping that's those jewels Mm-hmm. Boom Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And we celebrating the 25th anniversary of Spencer. <laughs> Man, right. we That's got the stuff. super producer up in the building. Yep. Supreme. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we build it with the gods. Yeah. Having you guys. Thank Boom you Wednesday. Hey. Boom, boom. Yeah. Hey. So what's the what you doing now? What's the what's the project? What you working on now? Oh actually I'm just enjoying myself <laughs> you know i'm enjoying myself I, i'm gonna always make music but i make music more just for fun and enjoyment and uh of course i got my groups um you know people is always always asking me questions on how to use an mpc and i love it that's what keeps me going okay. the more people that ask questions the more i have to still learn and stay on point so i can actually answer the questions uh-huh. i like that just trying to stay healthy. I exercise every day. Nice. You know, I'm in, you know, and um trying to keep my mind clear so that when something comes up that is meaningful, right? Mm-hmm. Just like I said with the brothers, just if tomorrow the brothers at, at 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 parliament call or the Israelites call or whoever call me and say, yo, we building this and doing that, I have the strength and energy to clear mind and and I can yeah. get up and go help. Yeah. That's facts. That's yeah, a good that's thing. That's a good deed. Yeah. That's what warriors do. Yeah, yeah. They suit up, always ready. Yeah, keep that yeah. armor on. Yeah, if you're ready, you ain't got to get ready. That's right. right. So that's that's what I've been doing. So I exercise, try to eat right, try to read a lot, and 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 be open-minded to new knowledge, to new stuff, and to people, and be ready to help. That's what's up. That's what's and up. Be ready for war. Yeah, <laughs> Facts. Facts. Uh-huh. It might just happen. And if Facts. it happens, <laughs> I'm going to put in work. Do you think it's a possibility <laughs> there can ever be a return of Sons of Man with a brand new album? Yo, now that's a good question. And I, it wouldn't be hard to do. And we talked about it during Hellraiser's movie, his documentary. Did y'all see um, Hellraiser's on Risen? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. All right. So during that, right, the producers of that, um, of the film documentary, that's that was a, a conversation. And I'm actually, when they filmed me, they asked the same question, and I spoke on it. And um, yeah, so we, it's, it's in the works. We've been talking. It's just a matter of getting people together. Like like sixty second, I talk to sixty second all the time. I actually I talk to everybody all the time, mm-hmm. right? But everybody is in different locations, and my thing I'm telling them, we don't have to be in the studio together. We can, we can send the track out, right. and y'all yeah. just do your part. Mm-hmm. But then people technology. have right technology, so people have difference of opinions. They're like, yeah, but it won't sound right. I remember Killer Priest. Texas and saying, yeah, but don't sound right. I want that that real sound because we tried that before piecing it together, right? Mm. We need to get together. And I know why they want to get together, to do what we used to do. Mm-hmm. To build. And build. And through building and talking about current events, present, past, whatever, 
in the midst of that, songs is created. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's uh-huh. current. It's a process. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Right. So that's what they want. And that soul comes into it. You know, with me, when I build and I talk and people's talk, and especially new knowledge, when new knowledge is coming to me that I didn't know or they refresh your memory, mm-hmm. yo, no lie, I'm a producer. Yo, music plays in my head. Mm-hmm. I can hear the beat while we talking. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there like, word, oh, that's peace, God. Yeah, oh, okay. And I'm hearing music. Mm-hmm. I know where the sample is. I might not even have it in front of me. I'm like, I need this, I need this, I need that. The beat going, I'm doing it all in my head. That's and that's I try, that's I just do it. You know, so I understand it because that's what we did before, and that's what made us successful, made people like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand the point. Mm-hmm. That's the subject. You tell him about uh, DJ Live Wire Money in the Grave, how we make mm-hmm. history. Yeah, yeah, DJ Live Wire Money in the Grave, number 19, uh, 2021, okay. Billboard, right. iTunes, number two, Amazon, number one uh, bestseller. Yeah, who's on uh, that? Uh, you got a whole lot of artists on there, but we let's talk about Dungeon Master. Dungeon. Yeah, Dungeon Master's uh-huh. on there from the Dirty Clansmen. Uh-huh. You got my boy Chasing J. I'm on a mission. Uh-huh. You uh-huh. on there? I'm on yeah, that's right. Just uh-huh. smash hit. Dash that bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we just released another video of where I'm, where I'm, where I'm from. Brooklyn's the there. Basher. Mm-hmm. That's right. Original Brooklyn Zoo. Uh-huh. The yeah. Basher. Yeah, I'm on there as well with stand up. Yeah, rock official. You know that stand up jump off. Yeah, so yeah, yeah it's going it. down. It's going down. We got a lot of haters on there. A lot of haters. My man Burke, uh-huh. he's on there with uh-huh. that lunch table. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you haven't copped it, go cop it. Go stream it. Yeah. Streaming on all digital platforms right now. Uh-huh. It's Woo Wednesday. It's yeah, it's it's 25th anniversary of the Sons of Men. Yes, yeah, we rock with Super Producer uh-huh. Supreme. Supreme. Yeah, yeah. bum bum bum. <laughs> That's what's up. We're live on Facebook. We're live on Instagram. We're live on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, you, can, you can catch us after the interview on Pandora, on Deezer, Title, iHeartRadio. Yeah. Don't forget Everything. Spotify. Spotify. Because they pay good. Amazon. <laughs> <Instagram>. <laughs> yeah, Bandcamp. Like everywhere. Just, just, just log in with us. Yeah, yeah. Live Wire Radio Show and so Live Wire Radio. Radio. So serious TV. Uh-huh. The best of both worlds. Yep. Hey, Sue, before you go, man, you got any inspirational words for the uh, entrepreneurs out there that's dealing with this? Music industry, mm-hmm. entertainment mm-hmm. world, COVID. Uh, man, my thing I always say, and I still believe it, enjoy it. Enjoy making music. Enjoy being creative. Right? And if you can enjoy joy doing it and doing it for the love and just doing it, that's when you're going to make your best music, your best product. That's mm. what's up. Yeah. Right? Because I've watched people that get in it and buy a room full of equipment. They got all of the top technology, but they only got into it to make money. Mm-hmm. And they and the, the product they putting out is just not that. It ain't it. Because they only got into it to make money. But I watched the people who do it for the love of it. Their music sound a lot better. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But this is the thing. In this industry, the way it is now, mm-hmm. not only will you have to make music, you will have to record your music. You have to know how to use Pro Tools, um, Ableton, whatever. After you make your music and you record it and mix it yourself without money from a, a record label or whoever, you have to know how to do everything yourself. You got to know how to do graphics. Yeah. Right? Do your Do your graphics or whatever. I always say, it's, this is like the, the matrix. Whatever you don't know, remember the matrix, they plug you in, and mm-hmm. the girl want to know how to fly a helicopter, set, they plug her in and they send it to her. My matrix, where I plug in, I plug into YouTube. Whatever I don't know how to do, yeah. I type it in on YouTube, and there's somebody on there showing how to do it. So I, I plug in to, I plug into YouTube, I let somebody give me the knowledge, I upload it in my head. Now I sit there for an hour. Now I know how to do it. 
Yeah. What I'm trying to get at is you probably have to, you most likely, the more you can do and learn and be self-sufficient at it, mm -hmm. right? So your creativity go from your music to recording to making your own graphics, your own stuff to put on the net. Yep. You know, you have to, it's, we got to know more now. Yeah. Our artists have to know more, wear many hats. That's true. You, know, That's you just true. can't be a rapper, you know, because I get a lot of guys from my, my era that says, yo, pre man, I just need some beats, man. I want to, this and this and that. Okay, here's a beat. Next minute, they trying to, yo, where can I record? What do you mean, where can you record? <laughs> we get on the app on that mic. <laughs> yo, turn on your computer, plug your mic in, so what? software, garage, I don't care what it is, record that shit. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, that's the first step. Then there's you problems know? out there that you can mix it and master it. You know what I mean? It's so levels to this shit. You got to look out there. Yeah, so, yeah, because I, I got, I, I remember telling one cat, He's trying to pay for a studio thirty five dollars, forty, fifty dollars an hour. I said, "Listen, you want to hear my, tr you want to hear, you want to hear it from me, or you want me to tell you how to go to a studio?" Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna listen to you. All right, what's up? I said, "Yo, man, go online and download Ableton, man. And here's a YouTube video. Watch these guys. Take your five hundred dollars you're gonna spend on the studio. Buy yourself a microphone. Plug it in and record yourself, man." Right. Take the rest of that money and put it on your marketing and promo. That's right. Because <laughs> you're going to need them dollars. Yeah. That, that, to me, that's it. You yeah. know, now once this internet thing happened, from from the very beginning, I used it. Mm -hmm. I've used it, put music on. I don't know if y'all remember, back in the days, they had a thing called mp3.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Upload your music on. It's before iTunes and before... Uh, a whole bunch of uh, stuff, yeah, and you put your music on there, the and they was, <laughs> they, they was giving out a giving out a nickel per play. What? A That's not the days, man. Five cents, yo. Trust me, I was getting paid. Damn. So I learned back then. I was like, yo, this internet thing is the way to go. So I tried to learn as much as I could learn. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, that's what's up. That's man, so mean, thank you for dropping all them yeah, June. Yeah. All mm -hmm. that good information. Yeah, I just, I just eat it up. <laughs> eat it up. Let the people know where they can find you. Oh, I'm on, I'm, I'm on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. I'm on Preem Wilder on Facebook, but I'm on um, on YouTube, right? Okay. Supreme Wilder on YouTube, or just do a search. Supreme the Beatmaker, Supreme Seven G. You know, I gotta keep it whoa, five percent. Whoa, right? whoa. Seven yeah. G. All right. So if you just do a search for Supreme Seven G, Supreme the Beat Maker, um, uh, my in in Google or whatever, it, a whole bunch of stuff comes up on me. I've been on the net for a very long time. So do you got a do you got a beat website? Like do you got where you know we can go and listen to your beats and you know? Oh no, nah, you stuff? know what? I, yeah. Everybody asks that. I really don't. Uh -huh. uh, I'm I'm still kind of old school with it. So if somebody want a beat, and I do it all the time, um, uh, so somebody just say, DJ Livewire, Prem, I need a beat. I'm like, all right, man. And especially the people who don't got the funds or whatever, I'll ask for a little bit of money. And this is the way I truly, truly do it. I say, what's your budget? How much money you got? Mm -hmm. And I might say, don't be cheap. I'll play around or whatever. Dude might say, I got $40. I'll be like, yo, man, I got 10 extra you got whatever they might come up with 50. i'm like all right you got 50 now go find some samples for me to flip okay mm. send me the links to the samples for me to flip that you think you would want and most of the time they'll send me some samples i'll flip them and say yo here it goes send me paypal send me the money boom so what i'm getting at is i make beats based on my conversation i have with somebody Based on the links that you send me when you I say, okay, I got to hear you rap. Based on that, based on our communication, gives me a feel. And, and, and that feel within me that I get, it, the vibe I get from a person okay. is then I can make the beat. You got to feel the energy. So every beat that I make for somebody is for that person. That's dope. It's custom made. Yeah. Custom That's made. Dope. So That's dope. Have, Right, so I don't have a whole bunch of beats sitting around. I just make the beat for that person, for that song, 
or whatever. Oh, that's I've been pretty, that's pretty good with that. It's, it's pretty cool. Drop a honey down in a song. <laughs> you know, come on with those supreme beats. <laughs> you, like, try something on that. Yeah, do you I, also I, do mastering as well? Um, not really, not really. Once I make the beat, a lot of times I just send it to the artist. Mm -hmm. They record it. I ask them to send back the final product so that I can help promote. Send me the links. They don't got to send me the song. Send me the links to the song, what you're doing, so I can promote it. Wow. Uh, and like a lot, like I, I said before, I'm generous, and I don't mind saying it online, yeah. saying it on your show. You know, if somebody paid $50 for a beat for me, right? Mm -hmm. That means they don't really have it, right? Correct. They're struggling artists. Then they go, they put, take it. Yo, Preen, what you mean? I said, look, just put my name on it. Go ahead. Do you. That's what's up. Go ahead. That's well, that's love. good looking out. That's yeah, love. That's love. Yeah. that's love for real. Because you got a lot of them artists out there that want to charge an arm and a leg, and they only have a name for themselves. This right here is a producer extraordinaire. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, it's, it's super it's, producer. Uh -huh. And look at the love that he's showing just because of the love that he has for hip hop. That's right. Thing. And that's what it is it's the love for hip hop, it's sharing, it's the village mentality. And it's just helping helping people because I was there. Mm -hmm. Nobody bought my equipment for me. You know, I had to hustle. I had to pack bags and key food, shovel cars in the winter, save my money while my friends was buying sneakers and jeans or whatever. I was saving my money to buy a drum machine, yeah, that's walking true. around with bummy ass clothes on. Yeah, so right. I know what it feels like, you know, to to try to get there and have nothing and you're trying. So if I can help. Then I, I try to help. If it's that's just that's advice, true. here's some advice. Yeah, you know? yeah. Wow, well, that's what's up. That's what's up. Uh -huh. That's what's up, man. Well, always come back. You know, Asu Casa, Yosu Casa. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, the Body Body Warriors. So Serious TV, uh -huh. the best of both worlds. Yeah. And we just was kicking it with Sue Pray. Yeah. That's oh, right, man. 25th and the first three. That's yeah, man. right, sons so of man. man. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Definitely come back. Definitely come Yo, back. Yo, thank you. Thank you for having me, man. And I'm really, really glad to be on the Live Wire radio show That's with DJ Live Wire <laughs> and, and Rain Robinson. Uh, Jackson. 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 <laughs> Rain, Rain Jackson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. <laughs> I've been around. I've been around. Still looking young, man. Uh -huh. So whatever you're doing, keep doing what you do. That's yeah. So so Rain Jackson, Rain shouting you out live, DJ Live Wire. You know, and the live go, rock go, go. Go. show. Go. Yeah. Up. No respect, man. Up, All right. Thank you.